Power screws are elements that are used to change angular motion to linear motion while transmitting power or developing large forces. The basis of power screws is the same for lead screws or ball screws, and also for all threaded fasteners, including bolts, nuts, cap screws, set screws, etc. So the applications of what we will study in the next four videos, and more importantly, in today's video, are very broad and useful. Looking at a screw with sharp V threads, we can easily identify some of the terms that we will be frequently referring to. The pitch is defined as the distance between adjacent crests in the direction of the axis of the screw. The major diameter D is the largest diameter of the screw thread from crest to crest. The minor or root diameter DR is the smallest diameter or the diameter of the stem. The pitch diameter DP is a theoretical diameter between the two and it's probably the most important one used for many of the expressions we will derive. And the thread angle is usually referred to as 2 alpha. The lead L is the distance a knot would move parallel to the axis of the screw when the knot is given one turn. For a single thread screw, the lead would be the same as the pitch, as given one turn to the knot would make it advance from one crest to the next. But for multiple threaded screws, which you can think of as multiple strings around the cylinder, each one being a thread, the lead would be equal to the pitch times the number of threads, as given one turn to the knot would make it advance that many crests. The sharp V thread seen in this drawing is only used to more easily explain the terminology of screw threads. During the forming operation, the crests and roots are usually flattened or rounded, with several dimensions following specific rules depending on the profile. M, MJ, UN, UNR. Thread profiles mostly depend on the application, so for example, square and acme threads are profiles that are used for screws when you want to transmit power. The square threads are half a pitch tall, and even though modifications are common, the acme threads also follow that rule, with a 29 degree angle between crests, usually referred to as 2 alpha. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, power screws are used to transform angular motion into linear motion. For example, as the screw itself rotates in place without translation in the direction of the screw axis, the knot element around it will move up or down. Worth noting here are three things. Screws are manufactured specifically to follow the right hand rule unless otherwise noted. Left hand threads are still really important for some applications. The knot element can be any threaded component that exists in angular motion with respect to the screw. So it's not actually a knot that you would think of when talking about nuts and bolts, for example. And finally, the phrase in angular motion with respect to the screw means that the knot can rotate around the stationary screw moving along the screw axis and non rotating nut moves along the axis of a rotating screw or a non-rotating nut is static as a rotating screw moves through it as it rotates. Regardless of the right slash left hand threads, the shape of the nut element or the relative rotation of the nut and the screw, what we're interested in is finding an expression that can relate the torque going into the system and the resulting output force. To do this, we will use a right hand thread screw that is only allowed to rotate while not translating linearly along its axis. It will be connected to a nut element, think of it as a larger element that is connected to a stage that allows the system to raise or lower a load, and we will impart a torque on the screw to move the stage up or down. In which direction should the screw rotate to bring the nut upward? This is usually a point of confusion for most, so think of the screw as a fastener. If you follow the right hand rule and you rotate the screw clockwise, the screw would go inside the nut, which is upward. If the screw is not translating, this means that with a counterclockwise rotation, the nut and the stage would move upward. Let's look at one full circumference of one thread. We will unfold it so that the circular surface of one turn of the thread is flat on a Cartesian plane, where we can see the circumference of the screw using the mean diameter, the lead, remember that by definition, for one turn of the knot, it advances a distance equal to the lead, and what we will define as the lead angle of the thread, lambda. The load, which affects the surface of the whole thread, would be represented by a vector f facing down. The normal reaction, n, would be, as the name suggests, normal to the surface. And assuming, like I just mentioned, that we are rotating the screw counterclockwise so that the load is moved up or raised, the threads that I see on the front of this picture, represented by the hypotenuse here, would be moving left, which means that the force that the nut exerts on the thread would be facing right. And we call this load P sub R because we are raising the load. 
Finally, since they're sliding between the nut and the screw, there will be a friction force in the opposite direction to the sliding of the nut on the screw, where F is the friction coefficient. From a sum of forces in the y direction, we can solve for the normal force and substitute that expression in the sum of forces in the x direction to solve for PR. Dividing by cosine of lambda in both the numerator and the denominator, and realizing the tangent of lambda is L over pi dm, we find an expression for the horizontal force PR, which happens tangentially to any point on the threads of the screw. Therefore, PR is used to calculate the torque required to raise the load by multiplying it by the mean radius of the screw, which is the mean diameter over 2. This would be the torque required to overcome thread friction and to raise the load, but we commonly refer to it as the torque required to raise a load. When rotating the screw clockwise, instead of counterclockwise, which means that the stage will go down and not up, and therefore the load will be lowered, not raised, the free body diagram of the thread will have PR facing left, or in this case PL, L for lowering the load. The friction, again opposite to the sliding, would go in the opposite direction. This will result in a similar expression with different signs. This is the torque required to overcome a part of the friction in lowering the load. In some cases where the lead is large or the friction is very low, the load will be large enough to make the screw spin without any external effort. When that happens, TL mathematically will be negative or zero. If the value for TL is positive, the screw is said to be self-locking and the torque will be required to lower the load. All of this is assuming a square thread profile. For any thread profile that results in a slanted surface of contact between the nut and the screw, like the ACME profile, the force F representing the load would be the vertical component of the actual interaction force between the nut and the screw, F over cosine of alpha. This would result in a slight modification to the expression we found, with a new secant of alpha term in it, which is the more general expression that we will always use, including an alpha equal to zero for square threads, which is basically the previous expression we derived. One last component of power screws configurations is the use of a collar. When the screw is loaded axially, a thrust or collar bearing must be used between the rotating and stationary members in order to allow the screw to rotate without rotating the load. If the load, represented by the force F, is distributed along the surface of a collar, think of it as a ring, the point load substitution of that distributed load would be located at a distance equal to the radius of the collar DC over 2. If the normal reaction N is equal to that force F, since the surface is perpendicular to the force, the friction force would be equal to the friction coefficient times the normal. The torque required to overcome the friction would then be equal to that friction force times the radius. And of course, the friction coefficient can be different for the color, so we name it F sub C. Let's look at a quick example where we use these expressions. For a C-clamp with a handle of 3.5 inches and a screw that is a 3 fourths of an inch dash 6 acme thread, meaning single threaded and 6 threads per inch, and friction coefficients for the screw and the collar of 0.15, I would like to know the maximum clamping force if the maximum force at the handle can be 44.04 pounds. We will assume a friction diameter of 1 inch for the collar. I know that the clamping force, as I'm pushing down on a table by rotating the handle, is equivalent to raising a load of magnitude F. The clamping force would just be equal to the normal reaction of the table to the C-clamp. Therefore, I can use the expression we derived for raising the load. I know that if there are 6 threads per inch, the pitch would be equal to 1 sixth of an inch, and if the screw is single threaded, the lead would be equal to the pitch. The ACME profile tells me that the angle alpha is equal to half of 29 degrees. The nominal diameter 3 fourths of an inch is usually the major diameter, and therefore the mean diameter would be equal to the major diameter minus 2 1 fourth of a pitch 1 on each side of the screw. The torque that I'm using to raise the load would be equal to the force that I'm using at the end of the handle of 44.04 pounds times the length of the handle. I know that this torque will overcome the force required to raise the load as well as the friction between the collar and the screw. Solving for F, which is the clamping force, knowing all the values for the rest of the variables like the torque, the mean diameter, the lead, 
the angle alpha, the collar diameter, and the friction coefficients results in a clamping force of 1000 pounds. If you want to check out other examples where power screws applications are used, for example the use of lead screws connected to a stepper motor to obtain a linear load in motion, make sure to check out the links in the video description. The content on this video was focused on developing expressions to relate torques and forces within power screws. In the next video, we will study the stresses that affect the threads of any type of screw, which will eventually allow us to calculate factors of safety for applications with screws. Thanks for watching.